How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay and today we are again talking about QYLD. For those of you unfamiliar, QYLD is the Global X NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF. And QYLD is one of the hottest ETF names on the market. Its 12% dividend yield has been attracting dividend starved income investors and savers to it in droves. And for the most part, QYLD is generally a very stable investment. It generates its high dividend yield by selling covered call options against the NASDAQ 100 index, commonly tracked by ticker symbol QQQ. But with the stock market dropping hard and fast over the few weeks as I sit here and record this, curious investors should take note of how QYLD is performing in these down market conditions before deciding to invest in QYLD for a number of reasons. See, I have mentioned QYLD a lot before in my videos. I did a dedicated video to QYLD explaining all the ins and outs of what it's about and how it works. And I have QYLD as one of the four funds included in my ultimate dividend ETF portfolio that I'm investing money into every month trying to build from zero to $100,000. And between some of the comments I've received on those videos and some of the discussion I've seen surrounding QYLD elsewhere online, there's a certain type of investor I hope is paying close attention to how QYLD is currently performing in a falling stock market. You see the danger of an investment like QYLD is that at a quick glance, it looks like a really stable investment. The share price never really moves all that much and it pays a gigantic dividend. So that lures a lot of investors into a false sense of security surrounding QYLD. Not only do they get blinded by that 12% dividend yield, but they take a quick glance at the stock chart and just assume that QYLD is super safe with very little risk. And that leads people to making decisions like this. Should I treat QYLD as a savings account? I'm gonna put my whole emergency fund into QYLD. 12% surely beats the half percent I get on my high yield savings account. And it shouldn't take a big market drop to signal that something like that's a terrible idea. But let's take a look anyways. Over just the past month, QYLD has dipped from a high of $22.73 per share down to under $20 per share. Now, $22.73 down to $19 something doesn't seem like a huge drop, but that's a drop of over 11% in just three or four weeks. Now, as a hypothetical, let's say the Buffalo Bills found a way to lose a playoff game they were leading with only 13 seconds left and I angrily threw my iPhone into a window in disgust. Now, hypothetically, I need to come up with several thousand dollars not only to replace a broken iPhone, but a broken window too. With my high yield savings account, it's no sweat. I withdraw the money, I pay for a new phone in a window, and I bask in my stupidity. But if I had kept my emergency fund in QYLD, not only would my original principal have lost 11%, but now I'm forced to lock in that loss because I need to take that money out to use it. So not only am I stuck paying for a new iPhone and a new window, but I also don't give that money a chance to rebound with the market. It's a double whammy. The same thing goes for people who want to try to replace bonds with something like QYLD in their portfolio asset allocation. Because obviously QYLD is pretty stable and the 12% dividend yield is way more than any bond fund is giving out. Again, seems good in theory until we hit a market drop. QYLD is down 11% and will fall further if the NASDAQ 100 continues to drop, while bonds have held flat. And that's the entire reason we hold bonds as part of our portfolio. Not because they're gonna generate good returns or a lot of income for us, but for diversification. You see, bonds sitting there and holding steady while the rest of our portfolio drops brings up the overall return of our portfolio in times like these. Just like the point of an emergency fund is not to max out the interest rate you can be earning on your cash, but to have cash accessible and liquid in the event you need it quickly. And none of this is to say you shouldn't be investing in QYLD. Heck, I'm doing it myself. But before you invest in QYLD, just keep in mind exactly what kind of an investment QYLD is and isn't 
and how it should be properly used. And if you're not really sure on how QYLD should be properly used, check out my video right over here and I'll teach you just that. And if you do want to earn more interest on your bonds and your emergency fund, check out this video over here on iBonds. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy those. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.